Hi there, well we're uh, here with Brian, this is a friend of mine and uh, we've got his set up, it's under construction but he has fitted with sound anything that he can. I mean he'd fit a toaster with sound if he could, he really likes his sound. <laughs> Everybody, and uh, we've come to visit a good friend of mine, and he's allowed us today to have a look through the railway room door. So we got here a pretty, uh, pretty normal door, but uh, let's go on through and see what we've got on this side. And uh, pretty normal bedroom. There we have Brian. Hi, Brian. Hi. Thank you very much for inviting us round to have a look at your setup, and uh, we've got it all laid out here. Still very much a work in progress, but I'm going to nip through to the middle. Okay, Brian, tell me what it is that we've got here. Well, this is uh, one of the Hornby IET 800 um, diesel electric units. Now, I bought this sound fitted already, but it has uh, four block sound speakers in it. Oh, right. So both of the power cars have both got two speakers in one at either end. Right. Um, it's one of the new ones, so it is fitted with um, interior lighting, which if you can just about... Yeah, I'm just about to see all the lighting in there. We've got a little bit of a uh, very moody glow. Yeah. Now, this one also has fitted with it um, because of the, the, the real one um, is diesel and electric because of the electrification of the Great Western right. Main Line. So, um, this one has both features of sound from electric and diesel. Oh, right. um, which can change from one to the other whilst on the move as well. Right, go on, give us a blast then. So uh, if we just put on the lighting, and then you can see if you have right, a the, cap there as well. The lighting's come on. So you can control the different lighting effects separately then? It's not like an all or nothing job? No, you can, you can control pretty much everything separately. There's a lot of settings to it. Um, as you can hear that now, that's starting up into um, electric power. Radio? And then with the um, diesel one, you can swap over at any time. Oh, it sounds like a Leyland bus firing up. <laughs> Plus the real one has um, power to every every axle on the entire train. So with a five coach train, obviously there's a lot of axles. Right. And you then have a diesel engine underneath every carriage. Right. Um, then obviously it will power through as well from the overhead panel grab switch and you used it both ends. Right, so um, how, how many sound chips are in there? There's one, just one at either end, is it? There's one at either end, but uh, there's um, four speakers, so there, there's two speakers per sound chip. Right, and are they both in the leading cars? They are, yeah. Right, right. I'm, I'm going to be fitting um, another one to the centre car. Um, at some point over the next few months. So will that need a separate sound chip or can you power it from the existing ones? Unfortunately it will need a new sound chip to do that because <laughs> the, the carriages between, uh, sorry the couplings between the carriages have no pickups on whatsoever so it won't continue through right. with the power, the, the, you can't do any through pickups. So, so the the internal lighting is that just running off what it picks up on the track, it's not th controlled through the chip in any way? No, that, that's that's just picking up from the track as it right. is. So a bit like the Hornby Pullman coaches. Exactly. Right, yeah. right. So go on, get, get a moving. <laughs> so this thing's entirely custom. You can't buy it ready to run with all of the gubbins in, or can you? No, no, you can't. No, there's um, the, the, there are chips available. Um, and Olivia's sound, uh, Olivia's trains do a sound chip, and then obviously you've got your lock sound things as well. Right, it's quite, a, it's a good sound with that. And the fact that you've got the the two sound chips, one at either end, it gives it very much um, a presence in the room, doesn't it? It does, yeah. So go on, tell us all now for those who are price conscious. What would this entire set cost if you wanted to go out today and buy 
all of this, fit it up as you've got it going there. Is, is this a, an expensive train? I spent £670 buying this as it is. Right, and um, is that, that that's a good price for it, or is that is that? Uh... That's pretty much what you'd expect to pay for it as it is. Yeah. That's, that's a lot of money. <laughs> In your opinion, then, does does the play value you get from this match what you've had to pay for it? I mean, is it a good value for money set up? Definitely, it is. Yeah, I mean, you, you're looking at for the five cast set, you're looking at four hundred pounds straight out of the box, right? Uh, not DCC fitted, right? And do they do other liveries, or is it just the GWR one? At the moment, there's only the GWR one that exists in traffic at the moment. Right. Um, however, the, um, the, the, they are bringing them into service with others as well. East Coast Mainline with LNWR and Hornby are bringing that out this year right. in, the LN, uh, you know, in the LNAR colours. Um, and then um, also, I think TransPennine, I think, having a few as well right, for, right. for a couple of their routes. So bit by bit, they, they will be available in, in other guises. But at the moment... You can only buy the the end cars in the Azuma livery, which is because um, that's the nickname for the mm. LNER ones, um, which is basically their 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 test livery, if you like, of the the first set that went on the East Coast Main Line uh, when Virgin was still running East Coast. Um, so you can get that one, and I think there's a plain white one as well, right, right, um, in the Hitachi colours. But apart from that, the only ones that are actually in service are the um, GWR ones. Right. Well, thank you very much for showing us that. Uh, I mean, modern image is not really my thing. I did bring a steam locomotive to try and turn Brian to the dark side, but uh, was not successful. And he poo-pooed <laughs> my Class 31 chip. So, um, yeah, th this, is, this man is a real connoisseur of his um, uh, DCC sound. But look, thank you for letting us come through the railway room door. And um, brilliant. Thanks for showing us that. That is okay. brilliant. All right. Well, thanks again for watching. And thanks as well to Brian for letting us come through the railway room door and uh, having a little look at what he's got here. And some very special, super duper sounds, some serious sounds. And I hope you've enjoyed that. But until next time, you take really good care of yourself. And this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying don't forget to like this video, share it too, and subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. And uh, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you here next time. But until then, take really good care of yourself. Bye for now. Today's video has been brought to you in part thanks to the generous donation of my fans on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks go out to Anthony Kidson, Mark Anthony, Michael Churchwood, Mark McShane, Bob Threeton, Alec Ralph, and Anthony Hunt. If you'd like to help support the show, head on over to patreon.com slash Jennifer Kirk. Thank you. Today's video has been brought to you by my books, Bringing Home the Stars, Twinkle Little Star, and also you can get the complete comic collections of All Over the House, Books 1, Books 2, and also the wacky zany Life of Nobty Mouse. Thanks and catch you later.